Okay, I'm somewhat prepared now with some pictures that could have been drawn by a four-year-old. I would love to make this with really good graphics, but I don't want to wait. I want to try to give you a description right now, you know, off the, off the um, top of my head, basically. Okay, um, <clears throat> okay, so we're talking about waves. Now, in general, if you, you know, for a wave, imagine that you have a little stick in the water and you wiggle it or you drop a stone or something, then you have a point source and ripples going out. Now here, this is the widest ripple, you know, and it's, of course, going out, right? And that's, this is a drawing of the top of, of the wave. There's a crest going on in the in halfway in between. You could draw the trough, so that would be the, the lower part of the wave. Okay, we're going to talk about an electron cannon. Electrons are waves, so it shoots out the electron's probability wave like this. And it's part of that circle that we had in the other drawing, not the whole circle, because you can basically, you're masking part of that circle. Now what happens if you put a screen in the way? There's two gaps you can barely see there and there. There's two gaps. What's going to happen if you do something like that with the wave? Well, according to how waves work, they will disperse a little. You know, it doesn't go through and make a perfect column. It makes, you know, a cone going out, so it'll be something like this. You know, the waves go up to the screen, and these act like little point sources. They're a lot like the original source. They're little point sources. And the waves start to overlap at some distance from the screen. If you go far enough away, zoom in on where they're overlapping, you'll have something like this. Now what happens if I insert a screen? A detector screen, okay? No gaps in this screen, but an actual screen. Okay, I'll show you where I'm going to put it. And this detector detects the height of the wave at that point in space. This line is the detector. See, at this point where the waves, at this point where the waves cross, there's going to be a lot of trough detected because the two waves crests are both there. It's going to be twice as high as a normal crest, right? And right here, halfway in between, there's going to be almost a zero probability, well, a zero height, um, because this, if this is a probability wave, because that's the kind of wave that an electron is, then the height is off of zero probability. That's going to be a zero probability wave. I mean, a zero probability point. And you see this. You see this pattern of where the electrons lie when you fly them one at a time. You see this pattern, you know. If you only had, if you only had the wave going through one slit, then you wouldn't have that pattern because the lines would never crisscross. Because if the things are going through one at a time, how do they add up to that? They must be going through both. So that's fine, but how can you have a wave that's focused like that? In quantum mechanics, it looks like the wave really is, is this original wave. You know, when you have, have an electromagnetic pulse off of, if this is looking straight down on top of a radio tower, if you have an electromagnetic pulse that you send out of that tower, it goes out in all directions, right? Well, actually, if you slow it down to low enough power and it sends one photon at a time, it, each photon just, you know, shoots zing in this way. And, you know, then one goes that way, and then one goes that way. If you put enough power in, they're all shooting out more or less at once by our scale. But really, in the scale where they're shooting out one at a time, it's random directions. The probability overall, they spread everything. But in quantum mechanics, it looks like each photon goes in every direction, but in separate universes. Now, you can have theories that get rid of the separate universes, like hidden variables or the Copenhagen interpretation. That's fine. Those are anything compatible with QM is eligible. But with hidden variables, you still violate non-locality. You violate um, the, the idea that things that something you do here can instantaneously affect something over here. In the multi verse or many histories interpretation, you more or less preserve that because everything's happening in its own local universe. Okay, and we're all sharing space, so things actually can interfere with each other a little bit.